Here's an example using simple extensions. Consider the real number alpha given as 3 plus cube root of 2 plus 2 cube root of 2 squared. We have the following questions. First, we want to show that q adjoint alpha equals q adjoint cube root of 2, subfields of the reals. Then we want to find f sub alpha, the minimal polynomial of alpha over the rationals. Finally, we want to find alpha inverse. Here I want to express alpha inverse as a polynomial on alpha over the rationals. Now for part one, we have alpha already in q adjoined q root of 2, so this is going to be a subfield. Now we want to show they're equal, so let's consider the degree of q adjoined q root of 2 over the rationals. This is equal to 3 because we have the basis 1 q root of 2 q root of 2 squared, so 3. Now, because 3 is prime, that means there are no proper subfields. So, if I have a subfield, it's either the rationals or q adjoined q root of 2. Now, with the subfield q adjoined alpha, alpha is not in the rationals, so that means that these must be equal, which is what we were trying to show. For part 2, I want to compute minimal polynomial of f sub alpha over the rationals. So we're going to use linear algebra. So we consider the linear transformation t sub alpha. It's going to carry q adjoined q root of 2 back to itself. t sub alpha is just going to send each beta to alpha times beta. Now straightforward to show that we have a linear transformation. And we also note if I take f sub alpha applied to t sub alpha as a polynomial of linear transformations, we get the zero transformation. So if we apply this to any beta, here we get f sub alpha on alpha times beta. f sub alpha on alpha is zero by definition, so a zero comes out. Now, that means the minimal polynomial of t sub alpha as a linear transformation divides f sub alpha. So we want to compute this. Now, to compute m sub alpha, I can do that in any basis. We get a matrix. That compute the minimal polynomial of that matrix. So if we use the basis 1 cube root of 2, cube root of 2 squared, can we get the matrix capital T sub alpha given as 3, 4, 2, 1, 3, 4, 2, 1, 3. To compute the minimal polynomial of T sub alpha, we first compute the characteristic polynomial. So that's determinant x times i minus T sub alpha. We'll denote this as p sub alpha of x. Now we want this determinant. Before we compute, we apply some row and column operations to put zeros in the matrix. Then we could do row or column expansions to get the determinant, or I can apply the six diagonals trick, since we're three by three. Either way, we get the characteristic polynomial equal to x cubed minus 9x squared plus 15x minus 25. Let's show that this is irreducible. Because it's cubic, if it were reducible, we'd be able to split off a linear factor. So something of the form x minus a rational. So this would have to have a rational root. If we apply the rational roots test, only possible rational roots, plus minus 1, plus minus 5, plus minus 25. If we check, none of these work. So this is irreducible over the rationals. Now, the minimal polynomial always divides the characteristic polynomial for a matrix. Because this is irreducible, the minimal and characteristic polynomials of t sub alpha are equal. We also have the f sub alpha is always irreducible okay, over the base field. So that means all three of these polynomials are equal. So the minimal polynomial of alpha over the rationals is x cubed minus 9x squared plus 15x minus 25. Now, what checks do we have? First, if we compare as the characteristic polynomial against t sub alpha, the term after the lead term is always minus the trace. So if we take the trace of t sub alpha, we see that 9 comes out, and that checks. We also have the last term is plus or minus the determinant. The sign is going to be determined by just alternating off the lead term. So plus, minus, plus, minus. So this is minus the determinant. If we compute the determinant, say using the six diagonals trick, 
We get 25, and that also checks out. Finally, alpha is supposed to be a root of this polynomial. So if we go to a calculator, okay, alpha is roughly 7.435. If we put 7.435 into this polynomial, what comes out is going to be roughly 0, checking that alpha is a root. For the third part, I want to express alpha inverse as a polynomial on alpha over the rationals. We have f sub alpha on alpha is 0. So now we know alpha cubed minus 9 alpha squared plus 15 alpha minus 25 is 0. I move the 25 to the other side, factor out an alpha, divide everything by 25. We have this equation here. Now this is alpha times something equals 1, so that something must be our alpha inverse. We substitute alpha into this expression. So I leave it to you to do the calculation. What comes out is alpha inverse equal to 1 fifth plus a fifth cube root of 2 minus a fifth cube root of 2 squared. Of course, we check. So again, I leave it to you to calculate alpha times alpha inverse equal to 1. That gives our answer to part 3. Now, another way to see this. Since we're only working with three by three matrices, we can apply Kramer's rule nicely. So note, I want to solve for beta in the equation, alpha times beta equal to one, or we apply the linear transformation T sub alpha to beta, out comes one. Now we put this in terms of our basis, one cube root of two, cube root of two squared. We have our matrix, capital T sub alpha, beta is represented by x, y, z, which we're trying to solve for, and one is represented by the vector one, zero, zero. So now we just have a system of linear equations. Now, for Kramer's rule, what we want to do, first we want to compute the determinant of T sub alpha, which is 25, then to find X, Y, and Z, we're going to take T sub alpha, and we're going to replace corresponding column vector with our image vector, we take the determinant, divide by the determinant of T sub alpha. So we compute, we have x equal to 1 fifth, y equal to 1 fifth, z equal to minus 1 fifth. That agrees with our answer on the other board. 